Welcome to Pediatric Physical Examination Part 3. In my today's lesson, I'm going to talk about respiratory system physical examination in children. Uh, don't forget to subscribe below to be the first to watch my latest uh, release videos. Uh, inspection, palpation, percussion, the auscultation remains the cardinal approach to physical examination uh, in pediatrics like that of adults. Uh, when we start from inspection of the respiratory system, uh, uh, first, in, on inspection, examine the shape, inspect from the front and back and also from the side of the patient. Uh, normally, in infantis, the thorax is round. And there are different uh, shape abnormality uh, in children. From this, the first one is pig and chest or pectus carinatum. This is protrusion of the sternum anteriorly. And pectus carinatum is a sternal deformity, which accounts for 5 to 50% of congenital chest wall abnormalities. And anterior displacement of the mid and the uh, lower sternum and adjacent costal uh, cartilage are the most common types. They are most commonly associated with protrusion of the upper sternum, and depression of the lower sternum occurs in only 50% of the patients. Uh, asymmetry of the sternum is common, and the localized depression of the lower anterior lateral chest is also uh, often observed. And the males are affected four times more than females in uh, pec uh, pig and chest or pectus carinata. Uh, there is also high, highly familial occurrence and the common association of uh, mild to moderate scoliosis. Uh, mitral valve disease, coarctation of aorta are associated with, with these anomalies. Uh, the other uh, abnormality of chest shape is uh, the so-called final chest or pectus carinatum. Uh, this is depressed sternum. Uh, pectus excavata uh, or final chest is a midline narrowing of the thoracic cavity and it's usually an isolated skeletal abnormalities. The causes are known and the pectus excavatum can occur in isolation or it can be associated with a connective tissue disorder such as uh, Marfan syndrome and uh, Heller's Danlos syndrome. Uh, it might be acquired secondary to chronic lung disease or neuromuscular disease or trauma. And the pectus excavatum occurs in 1 in 400 births uh, with 9 to 1 male predominance. And this one, or that means pectus excavatum accounts for greater than 90% of congenital chest wall abnormalities. There is a positive uh, familial history in one third of the cases. Uh, the other uh, abnormality in chest shape is barrel shape and the other one is Harrison sulcus which occurs in the cases commonly and also Harrison sulcus occurs in asthma. And uh, the other thing that we inspect on the chest is uh, pattern of breathing. There are different types of breathing. Uh, apnea or cessation of breathing for over 50 seconds is one type of uh, pattern of breathing abnormality. The other is uh, kind of strokes breathing, that means increasing rates and the depths followed by decreasing rate and the depths of breathing. The third one is small type of breathing, that means fast and the deep breathing, that as it occurs in uh, acidotic patients that, such as DK. So there are different patterns of breathing and we should have to uh, inspect uh, the shape of the chest, the pattern of breathing and also uh, inspection of the chest includes uh, inspect the expansion, symmetry and retraction, intercostal, subcostal, suprasternal retraction and the like. And the listen for uh, the character of the calf also. And also uh, check whether there is uh, any audible wheezing, strider and the grunting and also any hoarseness of voice uh, that can be audibly heard. And also inspect the uh, fingers for clubbing and also inspect the lips uh, and the tongue for bluish discoloration or cyanosis. Cyanosis occurs when the concentration of deoxygenated hemoglobin is uh, 5 gram per 100 ml of blood. So, uh, in severe anemia, in spite of uh, hypoxemia, cyanosis may not be detected uh, as there will be no enough hemoglobin to be deoxygenated uh, to result in cyanosis. So, in addition to uh, inspecting the lips, uh, tongues for blush discoloration or for cyanosis, inspect the fingers for clubbing, and the clubbing is around, uh, rounded curving nails, increase the thickness in the spongy and the consistency at the base of the nails, and also uh, a loose of the normal concave. Uh, curvature where the nail base meets with the proximal digit and the bulbous enlargement of the digital path. There are different, uh, <coughs> this image shows uh, di uh, different uh, chest wall abnormalities. Uh, the first one shows depressed sternum, that means final chest or pectus excavata. Uh, this one accounts for 90% of chest wall deformities. 
and the second one shows the pig and chest or pectus carnatum or protrusion of sternum anteriorly and this causes increased anterior posterior, uh, anterior -posterior diameter of the chest and it decreases chest excursion and the expansion during breathing and uh, so it causes uh, increased in residual volume during breathing and it affects uh, the, uh, the different functions of the lung and also cardiac activity uh, when we see uh, the different stages of clubbing there are around four to five uh, staging of clubbing, uh, clubbing based on the different textbook that we used as a reference uh, grade one is or stage one is referred to, refer to as uh, softening and the fluctuation of nail beds whereas grade two is referred to as loss of angle or uh, obliteration of a nail bed and the proximal nails of uh, for, uh, proximal nail folds and the grade three is increased the convexity of the nail folds and the uh, grade uh, four is thick and distal phalanx and the some call grade five as a hypertrophic osteoarthropathy so we should have to uh, grade the clubbing when there is clubbing in the children the second part of respiratory system physical examination is uh, palpation uh, examine for areas of tenderness on the sinus and the chest wall and also check for cryptation for subcutaneous emphysema and tactile frameters uh, should be checked and it can be done while the infant is crying in young children because young children are not cooperative as that of adults uh, we can do it when the baby cries position of the trachea should be checked uh, it can be determined by putting the middle finger in the suprasternal notch feeling and comparing the space between the trachea and the sternocleidomastoid muscle with the index finger and the fourth finger uh, in small infants assessments should be done using only the index finger uh, put in the suprasternal notch the tip of the index finger is pushed backward to determine the space on the either side as mentioned uh, uh, above this is how we can determine the position of the trachea uh, the third one is uh, percussion uh, both sides should be percussed to examine uh, both sides of the chest both anteriorly and the posteriorly and also we should have to compare each side uh, percussion uh, use light percussion both sides should be percussed as i have said and they compared and the normal the chest is resonant to percussion uh, uh, there are other sounds if the normal one is resonant and the dull percussion note is due to a solid lung that does not reflect sound as readily as aerated lungs or mass or fluid that obstructs transmission of uh, sound to the chest wall so uh, dull, dull percussion note is due to uh, either consolidation or uh, collapse and the stony dullness is uh, due to fluid or effusion uh, hyper resonant chest is due to uh, it, it occurs when there is air in the chest uh, out of the lung tissue and uh, it is due to most of the time due to pneumothorax and the coin sign can be elicited in pneumothorax using one coin as a plexer and the other as a pleximeter metallic sound can be heard uh, on auscultation on the opposite side uh, on auscultation uh, this is the order in which we should have to purchase the chest uh, we should have to compare each side we should have to go in the uh, zigzag pattern uh, to compare each side of the chest both anteriorly and when we came to the third part the fourth part of uh, physical examination uh, of the respiratory system uh, that's about auscultation uh, for uh, early for the beginners for the beginner students the cries of the baby might be frustrating uh, usually children do not cooperate when asked to breathe in or uh, out deeply however during crying the student should synchronize his listening with the inspiratory phase when the baby is taking deep breath for the next episodes of uh, crying normal breeze sounds include uh, bronchial breeze sound over the trachea and the major airways and in the rest of the areas it is most of the time vesicular or bronchovesicular but on most lung field areas it is uh, vesicular uh, listen for the phase of breathing listen for expiration and inspiration and uh, expiratory phase might be prolonged in obstructive airway disease uh, additional sound is uh, that means the normal breeze sound is vesicular in most lung field areas and various types of sounds reflecting abnormalities could be heard uh, from this the first one is wheezing wheezings are produced as air passes through a narrowed airways that means uh, when the airways are narrowed by di disorder like asthma bronchiolitis and the like uh, the other is uh, ronchi uh, these are continuous and the snoring sounds due to partially obstructed bronchi by inflamed mucosa or secretion uh, 
Snorra Sronka originates from the largest bronca, whereas medium pitched uh, bronca is that originates from the medium sized uh, bronca, and sibilant bronca is that arise from smaller uh, bronchioles. Uh, crackles or cryptations uh, sounds heard during inspiration, which is not uh, cleared by coughing. So to hear crackles, we should have to first make uh, the patient to cough and clear his airway. And if he coughs, uh, if he coughs and he clears his airway, and the, if the crackles persist, cryptations are due to the presence of fluid in the alveolus or in the air tubes. Uh, there are of three types: fine, medium, and coarse uh, crackles or cryptations. Uh, bronchial breeze sound is. Uh, this is a harsh, clear breeze sound that is equal both in inspiration and expiration. It is due to the separation of the vesicular component of breeze sound when alveoli are fu not functioning. Uh, amphoric breathing is a high-pitched metallic uh, toned bronchial breeze sound heard on auscultation, and it occurs in open pneumothorax or in the cavities. Uh, the other thing is about vocal resonance. Uh, vocal resonance uh, is uh, classified into two bronchophonia and the whispering pectoral uh, Increased uh, vocal resonance occurs in uh, co consolidation, collapse, and the tumor. In this case, we, we ask a patient to say 997744 and the like, and uh, we, we ascolte the chest. And uh, if there is increased vocal resonance, it, it, there is underlying consolidation, collapse, or tumor. Or when there is a decreased vocal resonance, uh, it might show effusion or pleural effusion. Uh, the other is uh, Whispering effect when a cavity communicates with the bronchus, uh, whispered words are clearly heard at the earpiece. So we ask the patient to whisper, and it is clearly uh, heard by a uh, auscultation. So that's called whispering pectoralaki. Uh, plural fluxion lab, uh, it occurs along the breathing pattern, and it's important to differentiate between left anterior plural friction lab from uh, pericardial friction lab. So this is uh, the order of auscultating lung fields. Just like a percussion, we should have to go in zigzag pattern and we should have to auscultate both anteriorly and posteriorly. So, in each place, we should have to uh, uh, auscultate for one full breathing, both in inspiration and expiration at a single point. Uh, this is how to differentiate uh, different types of breeze sounds. In a normal air feed lungs, vesicular breeze sounds are heard over most of the lung fields. And the bronchovesicular sounds are heard between the first and the second interspace and on anteriorly, and the bronchial sounds are heard over the body of the sternum, and the tracheal sounds are heard over the trachea. Uh, this image is a summary of how to differentiate different breeze sounds on the chest based on the duration of sounds, intensity of expiratory sounds, and also pitch of expiratory sound, and also location. Uh, vesicular breeze sound is uh, normally it is soft. And the inspiratory sound lasts longer than expiratory ones during vesicular one, and it is heard over most of uh, both lung field areas, as we have said above. Uh, Bronchovesicular sound it is uh, intermediate in intensity, and the inspiratory and expiratory sounds are uh, equal, and uh, it often is heard on the first and the second interspace anteriorly and between the scapula posteriorly. Um, bronchial breeze sound is loud and it's relatively uh, high pitched, and the expiratory sound is lasts longer than. Uh, inspiratory ones in bronchial breeze sound and it's heard over the manubrium of the uh, sternum. Uh, tracheal sound, which is uh, not used most of the time, and the inspiratory and expiratory sounds are equal in this one and it's very loud and it's uh, relatively high pitched and it occurs over the trachea and the neck. Uh, this is a summary of pediatric respiratory system uh, physical examination. Please refer to Barbara Betes for further explanation. Thank you.